you know, I think the, the biggest thing that's come up here the last two days is the guys are taking things from the scrimmage on Saturday and really trying to apply them here in practice over the last two days. And, that, and that's really in all three phases, which is, which is super positive that, um, you know, we're, we're willing to, to take the, the constructive criticism, to take the tough coaching, um, to try to apply them to better ourselves individually, to ultimately better the team. And that's probably been the biggest thing that stood out over the last two days coming out of the scrimmage. So um, it's been a positive. Um, obviously, we've got work to do here in the Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, and then scrimmage again on Saturday. Guys, put your raised hand functions up, and we'll, we'll go through some questions. Terry, you can start us off. Very good. Well, Coach Sarkeesian, good evening. Thanks for joining us. So you and your staff have really high expectations, and you've raised the bar on this team. And this is really evident when we hear from the other players. Has this team met your expectations for where they are today and their progress thus far? Oh, it's a bit of a loaded question. I'll be quite honest with you, um, but I'll answer it the best I can. Um, I, you know, I didn't expect us to be perfect after one scrimmage. Um, but with that being said, we have a high standard of which we want to operate. Now we are striving for perfection every day and we, and we chase it every day. Uh, the reality of it is, will we be perfect? I don't know, but I know that that's what we strive for. That's what we push for. And did I think we would be perfect in our first scrimmage? No, um, but uh, I think there was a lot of progress made and we've got to continue to make progress. We can't settle. Um, nothing stays the same, in my opinion. You either get better or you get worse. And so we have to keep striving to get better every time we take the field. Roger, go ahead. Coach, we talked a lot about these scrimmages. How do you, do you put more weight on them? Are, the, are they more important when you're forming a depth chart or are they just maybe a, a little bit more game-like? That's why you're, you're kind of pointing to those and the players talk about them as well. Well, you know, I think, you know, the one thing with the scrimmage is sometimes we can put too much emphasis on it. You know, we, we really pride ourselves in how hard we practice. Um, we pride ourselves on the second half of practice as if it was the second half of a game. We make it physically and mentally challenging the second half of practice. But the part that the scrimmage does is can you see any performance anxiety? Can you see guys maybe um, treat it differently in their approach, treat it differently in what they're asked to do? Um, and get out of themselves. And then you also see the guys that just continue to do what they were trained to do. And that's ultimately where we want to get. We, we, we shouldn't have to make the scrimmage any bigger than it needs to be because we really don't make up new plays. We don't make up new calls. We're running the things that we practice and that we were trained to do. And the guys that really perform well in the scrimmage just kind of operate in, in what they were asked and trained to do and what they prepared to do. So that's probably why we put the emphasis on the scrimmages, who can get there mentally, because ultimately game day should be the same. If we trust our training and trust our preparation, we'll play really well. If we start to get out of ourselves and think we have to make things up or get distracted by crowd noise or because we have real uniforms on, whatever that the case may be, that's when, that's when mistakes occur and that's when we get out of ourselves. So um, we're constantly looking at that in the scrimmage format and then how can we coach guys out of that if that comes up. Um, but that's really the only thing we do from a scrimmage standpoint outside of there's probably a little bit more live tackling that occurs in a scrimmage outside of a practice, but the play calling aspect of it on, in all three phases remains the same. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Steve, is there any significance to Hudson taking first team reps with the in the two minute drill today? And do you have a sense that the team is responding more to one quarterback or the other? No, we, we've been rotating the guys pretty good with the ones and the twos and trying to get them uh, in different scenarios, right? Whether it's a two minute, whether it's a fastball period, whether it's third down, blitz, red area. And there's a lot of aspects that make up the game, obviously. And so trying to give everybody ample opportunities to play in the various scenarios, put them in some tough situations to see. I, I think our team in general recognizes that both guys work their, work their tails off. Both guys are, are grinding at this. They're working at it. They're preparing. Um, they're taken to the tough coaching. Um, and I think, th I think the team has a lot of respect for both guys. And I don't, I don't think they, they 
have a sense or a feeling of, man, we're going to, we're going to play better because one guy or the other, they just, guys are focused on what they need to do and allowing the quarterback to do his job. Bob, you're up. Yeah. Sark, just on that note, you said you're going to have to go with your gut at some point. Do you know what that timeline looks like at least yet? Have you, have you kind of decided it's going to be after the second scrimmage or do you have a feel for that yet? No, I, I haven't. I haven't put a, haven't put a, haven't put a timeline on it. I kind of, I thought about that and I, I always talk to these kids in recruiting. They're going to make a commitment on this date in recruiting. Right. Um, but then that date comes and they're not ready to decide, but they've already made that, that, Hey, this is the date I'm making my commitment. They don't really know where they're going to go. And then they, they make a irrational decision. So going with your gut means when it feels right. And, you know, for me, the, the actual date is the first game. Somebody's got to run out there on September 4th to take the snaps with the starting offense uh, when we take the field. Ideally, I'd like to make a decision before then, um, but there's no exact date on that for that to happen. It's when it's going to feel right, and, and, and when, it, when it's that time, we'll talk to both guys, and, and we'll, we'll go after it. Joe, go ahead. Steve, uh, last year when the previous staff, they changed defensive coordinators ahead of the 2020 season, and they brought in the, the Atavis tackling system. Uh, I was just curious if that's a system that you use or if you have your own and also just your perception of tackling so far throughout camp. Uh, I'm not aware of the Atavis tackling system, so clearly that's not the one we use. But uh, um you know, I think our tackling has gone well. Um, I think it's gradually improved like anything in camp. You know, the way training camp goes, when we first take the field, we're, we're in helmets. So you really can't tackle. We can work on our fundamentals and our techniques. Then we get into half pads. Uh, and then ultimately we get into full pads. And that was one of the hard things with the scrimmage. That was only our second day in full pads. We've had one day since. We'll have one more day and then we'll have our, another scrimmage on Saturday. So we are working on our fundamentals and our techniques of tackling. I think we're seeing um, some guys really gravitating to that and understanding it and doing it well. And we have other guys not. And that, that's like anything. That's like route running or, or ball security or whatever that is. And we got to coach them all uh, and try to put them in the best position to be safe and put them in the best position to be successful to get people on the ground. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Sark, uh, just want to ask you about Junior Angulao working at center. Seems like Coach Flood's de devoting a lot of time, at least the, the practice periods that we're out there, to, to working him at center. How's that process going for him? And then what has just this first kind of week and a half been like for that offensive line where you know, you're trying to figure out your, you know, your top seven or eight guys and maybe manufacturing some depth, just kind of a state of that position group right now? Well, I think the first thing with Junior, um, you know, I have – and Coach Flood and I, you know, been together now five years. You never want to go into a season without having three guys that can snap the ball in a game. That, that's an uncomfortable feeling when you go into a stadium with only two guys that have ever snapped the ball. So we know we, you know, we know Jake Majors can snap. We know Kerstetter can snap. So we're really trying to develop Junior as a third center, as a guy that can snap the ball in game-like scenarios. So that that's one of the key components to that. The second part of it is. To your point, we're trying to find that right combination of who is kind of that top eight guys. Um, and then what are the combinations if the left guard goes out, if the right tackle goes out, who's going to supplement that? Who's going to step into those possession positions if the center goes out? You know, so we're trying to find those right uh, combinations uh, and then and then kind of play the tape forward a little bit. If something happens, who now is going to move where? to give us the best opportunity for success. So I think Coach Flood and I have uh, been doing this together, like I said, for five years. So we got a pretty good feel of the things that we both are looking for. But the center component, there's nothing worse than having a guy in the game and, and you know he's not snapping the ball well because that affects everybody on the field. Danny, you're up. Steve, I'm kind of wondering your thoughts about the development of the depth behind Hudson and Casey, those young guys uh, back there. and. If there was an emergency quarterback situation, does Roshan fit into that picture at all, or is that part of his past now? Um, I think Charles Wright is a guy who, you know, had the luxury of graduating high school early and going through spring practice, um, has made really good progress. You know, it's tough as a true freshman, you know, and, and there's a lot flying on and you're, you're learning a lot and all that. So from where he was in spring to where he is now, been impressed. Cole Lord is another young man who's a true freshman. 
um, who just got here this summer, who I think is, is drastically improving. All those things are positives and, and we'll see how far we can take them. I think Roshan always gives you that opportunity and that option. He's a very smart player. He's uh, he, he really understands the offense. He's versatile. He's tough. I think that's why he does so well on special teams. Um, he's kind of a Swiss army knife for us. So I wouldn't rule out him being an emergency guy for us. If, if it got to that, um, hopefully we, we knock on wood, we don't ever get put in that situation, but yes, I, I would say he is an option that way. What time for a few last ones down or go ahead. Uh, hey coach. Um, I'm curious as to at what point in, in training camp will you guys shift and really start focusing on Louisiana? Are you trying to give your team maybe two weeks to prepare? I'm just kind of curious on that one. Yeah, so we'll we'll start shifting our focus there kind of into next week. Um, I, I don't want to say it's that first Monday after that scrimmage, but it'll it'll start about midweek next week, and that'll give us about a week and a half of prep time. Um, like I said, we, we, we did some things. I think we got a pretty good understanding of a direction we want to go in, um, but we definitely want to give our guys ample time to own the game plan uh, in all three phases to get that done. Sam, you're up. Hey, Steve, when we visited with Casey Thompson, I think both in the spring and in, in the a couple weeks ago, he would mentioned that he, he stews over mistakes. He mentioned stewing over the incompletions in the bowl game and, and the pick six in the spring game. I'm curious how that mentality for him, how have you seen it manifest itself in his performance and, and his mentality day to day? I think, I think that's, you know, twofold. I think one, that's a, most competitors kind of have that trait, right? Um, win, lose, or draw, most games after a game, I always remember the calls that I didn't love that I made, right? The play calls. I'm like, ah, I wish I would have called this or that. I didn't, I didn't love that play call. I think that's natural competitively that, that we focus on kind of the, the plays that we would like to be better. It's like after a season or down the road, you kind of always remember the losses more than the great wins for whatever reason, right? But on the flip side of that, I think because of that memory, you generally – don't make the same mistakes twice. That, that's generally what happens. You kind of learn from that mistake. And that's, that's the key component, not, not to be shied away or scared from a play call or, or, a, or a coverage that you see back there at quarterback, but to, you know, just that subtle memory, you know, subconsciously of, of how to operate that play. And I think that's the competitive side that Casey has, right? I mean, he, if, if a mistake occurs, he wants to try to fix it so that it doesn't happen again the next time. Two last one, Cedric, go ahead. Hey, Steve, I know the, the freshmen are coming up on the second or third week, and they're going to hit that wall the coaches talk about. Um, in your experience, uh, how important is it for those seniors, those juniors who have been through it, to help pick these guys up? Because, I mean, it's, it can get brutal during the summer. Well, I think I think that's a key. You know, we, we talked about that Monday with the team, um, about quality leadership. Um it, it's one thing to lead and be a leader. It's another to lead with a real quality, right? With a real positive mindset and attitude and uplifting um, approach to your peers, whether they're a senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. Uh, the freshman, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. It's a grind. Uh, they've been through. They've been through training camp in high school. That they, they kind of understand that. The challenge for them, more importantly, is new schemes, right? Um, it's like anything. You go to a new school, you're learning everything all over again. Maybe some new fundamentals, some new techniques, some new schemes. And so it's not always the physical fatigue that they get. It's some of the mental fatigue that they get. And that's where we have to be cognizant. We have to make sure there's certain days that we're not just overloading these guys with information and that we're allowing them to play the game that they're instinctually good at. And that's why we recruited them. So uh, I think we're aware of that, but I, but I would agree with you from a leadership standpoint, it is critical for those guys to be there for those younger players, but be there in a really positive light to build those guys up, knowing that, hey, there is a light at the end of this tunnel. I know you may not be able to see it or see it very well, maybe a small one, but there is a light there and there's a season to come. Um, and we just want to make sure that, that everybody's ready and, and to perform if your number gets called. Last one, Mike, go ahead. Coach, you, you mentioned it last week, and you talked about how you're very particular about the quarterback position. After you had a chance to go back and look at the tape, were there some things that you saw that the players did miss, the quarterbacks did miss, and what did they do to improve on some of the constructive criticism that you mentioned earlier today? 
Yeah, the, the, the thing that probably disappointed me the most going back to the tape was was exactly what I was saying earlier. I, I don't think that they trusted their preparation and their training to get the, to the scrimmage. You know, they, they performed really well for that first week of camp. And then when the scrimmage came, they kind of veered off from just some of the fundamentals, techniques, reads, decision making that had gotten them to that point. And that was probably the biggest thing for me that was a disappointment was just trusting what you had done to build for that moment and then continue to do it. Um, the positive is I would probably say the last two days of practice have been their best two days so far of camp. And that, that's, the, that's the positive that they took the coaching. Uh, like I've said all along about Hudson and, and Casey is that they're, they're driven, they're focused, they're competitive, they want to be great. And they've really tried to apply the things that we've asked them to do. And so coming out of the scrimmage, you know, we coach them hard and, and they've, they've, they took the coaching, they've applied it and they've performed really well the last two days. And now we need to continue to build upon that throughout the week.